Hi, Jeremy Young here from Atomos. We've actually started shipping the Shogun. It's been a little bit of a delay. However, we're very proud of this product. So the point of today's video is to take you through what's in the box, what you actually receive, which cameras it's capable um, of working with, and we'll go through the feature set and what's coming into the future and what you get out of the box. So unboxing the Shogun. Uh, first of all, we have changed the case. We used to make our own cases and now we've teamed up with a very reputable Italian design company and made case uh, from HPRC. Thank you guys for working with us on the OEM of this, of this product. So this is obviously a retail high quality case that you now get. So we've added that in for free. So let's go through it. You've got the Shogun. What do you get in the box? So obviously it's a pretty meaty case and there's a lot inside. Okay, so this is what you get in the box. Obviously I've got my Shogun, I've got my uh, drive caddies, the Atomus D-Tap adapter and the battery. We've got some spare battery adapters here for your MP570, 770 and 970 batteries. This slot is for the drive raid caddy, which is available uh, early next year. And then we've got the uh, power station, which is also available then. And so you've got a neat spot for everything that you need in terms of running the Shogun, the disc caddies and the batteries. Then if I look here, we've got accessories under. This is a big box. There's more underneath. So that's my first layer. Let's get rid of that. Now on the second layer, I've got my quick start guide, which gives you all the warranty information. Don't forget to register your product to get your three-year warranty. That's the same as our other products. So Shogun comes with a one-year warranty. You register, you get three. Tells you what hard disks, how to insert them, how to use them. Very, very simple quick start guide. So that's the second thing you get. We have the plethora of accessories that you need in order to get your production going. We've got a charger with multiple adapters, car chargers, etc. AC. We've got the Shogun charger. One of the main bits that you'll need is the microphone balanced XLR audio connector here with, from the Limo connector with both left and right in and out. We've got our master caddy, which also accepts the master RAID drive which will be available next year as well as all of your plugs for global. So there's nothing that you need to buy except for a couple of items. So the first item that you need to buy is a HDMI cable. Now Atomus sell coiled cables with very stiff connectors that go correctly into HDMI sockets both micro, mini and full size. You can stretch them to be any length so they're not pulling on your connector. We recommend those cables but you can use any HDMI cable. The next thing you need to buy is a hard disk. We've tested all of these hard disks and all their size iterations from 120, 240 gig, 500 gig, one terabyte. There's a bunch of one terabytes from SanDisk and from Intel and from Transcend, as well as OCZ, Kingston. These are all the approved drives. Please go to adamus.com slash support and you'll see the drive list. It's very comprehensive and we're testing new drives all the time. If there's a new drive you'd like to use from your area, contact support and we'll test it for you and let you know whether you can use it or not. So they're the two things you need to buy. The other thing you probably already have that you need will be a microphone. Either, like we're using, we're using a Sennheiser um, lapel mic, you can use a boom mic or you can use a handheld mic. We have Phantom Volt 48 um, on the unit, so you can use any mic on the planet. Um, we've got line level and a Pro Audio Plus 24 dB. So all of those audio settings that, that you love are all in the Shogun. So there's some of the, the things that you'll need to buy to make your production work. So that's the case, and that's what's in the unit, uh, in the box. Now we're gonna move on and show you actually how to set up your Shogun and what features it comes with. So we just finished unpacking and now the cool bit, which is where we go get to go in and work out exactly how to use the Shogun. So you can see that it works, operates very similar to uh, our current operating systems with our record, play menu, all of our uh, waveform monitoring, monitor assists and, and tagging functions in there. Again, you touch the screen, you get a clear screen. We've got a 1920-1200, which gives us this band of, of controls, which are obviously removed from the screen, which is very handy. So what I'm using here um, is an SSD. I'm recording to ProRes HQ directly from the GH4. Now this GH4 puts 10 bit out. You need to go into the settings of the camera and choose HDMI output as 422 10 bit. 
That will mean you can't record internally, but what it means is you get the lovely 10-bit from the sensor over HDMI straight to the Shogun. Now, to put a few people's minds at rest, our HDMI is 10-bit, always has been, and always will be. Uh, the next thing that I want to show you is uh, some of the cool functions that we've got. So, first of all, we've got our HDMI in and out, and we can loop out HDMI. We've also got SDI in and out and GenLock on the back of this unit. The next thing is uh, setting up your shot. So here I am with my GH4, I've got 10 bit coming in. I'm recording directly to my SSD, which is plugged in at the back here. Again, I can choose multiple SSDs, SanDisk, OCZ, Kingston, Intel, Transcend, etc. They're all available. Waveform, let's check my exposure settings. Now I've got a few waveform functions, waveform down the bottom here. If I just throw my hand in front of there, I've already set this level up, it's not too bad. I could probably adjust it down a little bit, but I'll leave it there. If I touch the corner, I get the full waveform across the screen, and if I go into the main mode, then I've got the same thing. So also, I can adjust the transparency of this. Boom, transparency down, I can still see my image, or I can whack it back in the corner and I can still see what's going on. Very, very beneficial. If I want to get rid of that, my overlay stays with the waveform, but everything else is removed. These are my new menu structures. I can change the size and display in here. Okay, so that's waveform. I'm going to leave that on down there, shore it up a little bit in there, so I can see that all the time. If I want to do my vector scope, that's also available. Vector zoom is available. I can make that full screen, and we can make it fully touched. So if I did now go in, I'm going to go back to um, the Luma. If I touch on here, next thing is my focusing. I've set up my exposure. I've got a few exposure tools in here, like Zebra. I'll whack that up to 90% or down to 70%. You can see I've got my zebra on there. Again, false color for faces. Astro Boy's face is uh, perfectly exposed there. And then I've got blue only to check my noise. There's no noise coming from this sensor at, at the moment. It's a beautiful crisp image on my beautiful crisp screen. I, my guides are here as well. I've got my TV guides and I've got my cinema guides, which are the next one along, which show me the 239 to 1. So all of those guides are in there as requested by customers. The next feature is my favorite. First, I'm going to do a 2 to 1 zoom. I can move anywhere around the screen like this. I can also move the little square inside the screen square there and set up exactly where I want the shot to be. That's 1 to 1. If I put on peaking, you can see I'm in peaking mode. This is the outline mode. If I adjust my focus, you can see I'm very easily showing the peaking there on, on Astro Boy's helmet. If I then change to black and white, again the same, and I can adjust my colors. And then I go into fo color focus, which is our normal focus peaking. I'm going to leave it in color focus here and go into two to one zoom. So now I am zoomed in two to one on 4K. So I'm actually, I've got an 8K image that is really large around. So I can move around the screen and go down to the characters at the bottom there of my scene. I'll choose the Ashes Urn for all of you UK people. That Ashes Urn is Australia's right now. And I will zoom in and out on my two to one zoom. Definitely crack the focus there. You can see I'm all red. If I zoom back out, now my whole scene is in focus. This is a very, very useful feature. If I think, oh, I'm not sure about this little guy, then I'll go in and shore it up for him and back out. Now, if I turn the overlay off, then I've still remained my little box here. I can move around. I can also do it anywhere on the screen. Very convenient, very easy to use. And actually, to be honest, the focusing tools are great, but often on this screen, you don't really need to, to do the focus peaking. Um, it's more like a check because the screen is so crisp and clear. You can see my audio level meters here. If I touch on the audio, then I've got my 12 channels of digital audio, eight channels in HDMI, 12 in SDI, and then two channels of analog audio coming in here. So this is the next main setup point, which is the audio. So I'm going to grab my Rode microphone. Thanks to the guys at Rode, especially Scotty, sending these so quickly so we could do this video. Here is, I'm plugging in, I need to turn my phantom mic on and now I have my microphone. This is a Rode microphone, boom mic, you can also use handheld mics etc. 
we've got our input gain here. I'm going to drop it down a bit because this mic's quite sensitive. And you can see I'm in a good range there. So I'm now all ready and set up to go. On the output, I can also gain my output up and down. And I can adjust my audio level meters down here to show all the audio that I'm, that I'm, that's visible. Or I can show the two channels that I'm monitoring. If I want to monitor the analog channel, now I'm monitoring the analog channel. So that when I close the audio menu, Everything is one touch away and then I'm back ready to record. And so now I've set up my shot, my sound's pretty good, I'm watching my microphone, then I hit record. So now I'm recording. We can also trigger from the GH4 with their new firmware update. We can trigger from the Sony's, we can trigger from the Canon's, we can trigger from pretty much almost any camera that's a modern camera out there that has HDMI's. Um, start-stop trigger protocol, which actually we invented and have released as an open standard. The other thing I want to show you, the last thing, is that we've adjusted the input page. HDMI source, video in, we can trigger from HDMI or different sources. I need to stop recording, then I can adjust the trigger. So HDMI trigger is what I would want. And now I'm also looping out 10-bit 422 over HDMI and over SDI. So at the same time, I am double conversion, HDMI loop out and then conversion to SDI so I can run to a, an external monitor, etc. So these are all the setups. So now that we've recorded, then we hit stop. We either hit stop on the camera or on the unit. And now we need to review our footage. Now normally in an, an Atomos operating system, there'd be a play button illuminated here. Now for this firmware, only for a few weeks, playback is not implemented. The reason we did that, we had a few issues in playback and we only release things that are rock solid. You can see that this unit is actually performing exceptionally well and will do so for the lifetime of its use. The playback function we have removed because it had a few bugs that we do not want to release. Now, we are confident that we can release it within the next two weeks, i.e. before Christmas, failing any catastrophes. However, we're asking customers to be patient. If you want to review on set, then all you need to do is pull out your disk and then go directly to your laptop. So I've just stuck my Shogun drive into my laptop. And if I double click on the actual disk, I've got all my footage here. And that's my Atomos footage ready to play in 4K. So there's my footage. If I now look at the inspector, you can see I'm moving down there. It's a beautiful crisp image that we just took off the GH4. A7S, we're shooting this right now with the A7S. This footage will be available for you to check. And just so you know, if I hit Command I, it brings up what the footage actually is. It's 3840 by 2160 at 25p, which is what I just recorded. So this is a very easy way to review. It takes a little bit longer than playing on the unit. But we ask you to be patient for a couple of weeks. This is a good way to review your footage. While you're recording, obviously you have the ability to play out. So what I've got here is the GH4 with 422 10-bit over HDMI into the Shogun being recorded to Apple ProRes 4K. If I want to monitor that or send it to a director's monitor, I've got a monitor behind me and I'll show you exactly how easy that is. We just plug that straight in and right behind me is the image that I'm seeing. So if I go now over here, you can see that I'm exactly doing what you would do on a studio set, running your HDMI or your SDI to a client monitor. It's very, very simple to do, very easy. This is loop out of HDMI at the same time we're going SDI. So many, many customers slash clients can look at what the footage as well as your crew to ensure that you're recording the best 4K possible on these wonderful massive screens from both Sony, Panasonic, LG and Samsung. Okay, so let's recap what we went through today. We went through the unboxing, all the wonderful accessories, all the cables and chargers and batteries that you get inside the box. So Atomos provide everything except for a cable and a hard disk. But in terms of hard disk, we, we went open market. We've tested, I think, around 30 or 40 disks so far in different sizes. All the major makers in your area and local store, you can go down and buy it. It's about $200 for 500 gig which is very affordable and gives you one and a half hours of recording. One terabyte will give you two and a half hours of ProRes HQ 4K recording. We then went through the unit, its monitoring capabilities, its recording capabilities. One thing to remember, the monitor is 100% RGB and calibrated from factory. However, screens drift, especially 
over time, one month, two months. We recommend every two weeks using your spider calibration unit from Atomos and make sure that your screen is calibrated. This is a very important part of the, the process for making sure you set up your, your shop properly. Next, we have the audio. Balanced, phantom mic, line level, in and out. And you can connect to all your favorite mics, Rode mics, Sennheiser, all of the wonderful mics that you know and love. So that's what we went through. The, ne the next thing I would like to talk about is both playback and DNX, which are not in the initial firmware. So playback. Playback. We decided to remove playback because of a few bugs that we're fixing right now. We expect to release that within the next one to two weeks. We're hoping very much before Christmas you will have this in your hands. Once you get playback in there, the only thing missing in the original promise schedule from Atomos is the DNX HD. Now DNX HD will take a little bit longer. It will be available next month and it will be inside the unit in a free update. So DNX HD is coming in January 2015. The next thing I want to talk about is some questions about camera support. We support almost every camera on the market that has 4K output. If it's outputting anything up to 4K P30, then we will accept it over HDMI or SDI. The popular cameras we've seen are the A7S, the FS7 from Sony, and the AX100, which is the camcorder. We then have the GH4, as well as the Vericam, which you can record 4K from both of those cameras. The GH4 especially has 10-bit output. Again, our HDMI is 10-bit, as is our SDI, so we record all of those wonderful colors coming from the sensor of the GH4, and we record that directly to ProRes in 10-bit. The next is the Samsung N1, which actually has surprised us. It's, it's a very nice sensor. It has a clean HDMI mode where you can adjust all the appropriate settings, and we've tested extensively with that camera. That's working very, very well. And there's a multitude of other cameras where you may need a 4BNC to one BNC 12 gig converter in order to come into the Shogun because we have 12 gig single connection over SDI. We also support six gig. So camera support, 10 bit support. Now shipping schedule, they are in customers hands as of today in Europe. It, uh, one more day in the US and we'll start to send those out. Please be patient over the next week. We're, we're delivering them in the order that, that they were submitted to us as orders by your resellers. So please make sure that your reseller tells you when you're gonna get your unit. They'll be coming in big batches over the next week and you should be able to have your unit within a week. So thank you very much for your support and your time watching this video. We're very proud to be shipping the Shogun and we really hope that you enjoy recording 4K for the masses and telling your story and making history.